If you're looking to buy solar panels or batteries right now, then there is two major reasons why you're considering getting them. One major reason is it's a return of your investment. You get payback on that and it will eventually pay you back as a long-term investment. Number two is you're a keen environmental person and you care deeply about the environment. And let's be honest, if it doesn't save you any money, you ain't gonna care about number two even if you care about the environment, if that return of investment just isn't there, you're unlikely to make a huge major investment in putting solar panels on your roof. So today's video, we're gonna be looking at whether buying a battery only system, that's no solar panels, just a battery, is a better return of investment, especially here in the UK with some news that's come out of recently. But I'm gonna be looking at the evidence I have, because I used to have a battery only system. Now I have battery and solar. So I have data to compare all this kind of stuff together to give you a condensed better understanding on whether now is the time just to go for battery only or battery and solar. Let's first discuss some of the reasons why you might not want to fit solar panels on your roof. Now a big consideration is it involves people walking on your roof. Now roofs can be extremely fragile or slightly fragile but all roofs are a fragile material all up there supporting the roof from being leaked on now especially here in the uk where we use uh, slates like uh, welsh slates or english slates to basically cover the roof in slates slates are fairly thin and pretty easy to crack if you don't know how to walk on them properly and then you've got marley tiles and various other tile sort of designs here in the uk and again they can crack quite easily so one worry would be having someone who's maybe not trained or understanding how to work on a roof properly could actually cause you some serious leak and damages up there it also involves screwing uh, stuff into your roof lifting slates moving slates around and if someone who's working on your roof doesn't know what you're doing you could end up with various leaks. Even if they do know what they're doing, the chance of having a leak is still quite substantial. However, it can be mitigated by getting a company in to fit your solar who actually know what they're doing. And preferably, rather than having an uh, electrical team fit the solar panels and stuff on the roof, if they have a roofing team that just does the roof, roofing team does the roof, and the electrical, electrical engineers do the electrical en uh, stuff, that would be my preferred option. Someone who's been doing roofing for 20, 30 years or been trained by someone who's been doing for 30, 40 years and been working continuously on roofs is a much preferred person than a, an engineer that's just been trained over a year or two years to work on roofs and might not know some very weird sort of conditions that could happen on certain roofs. So that's my preferred option, but there's also some other risks when they're up there on the roof. And one of them is they could fit the panels perfectly fine, but you might get some risk of DC sparking. That could be if they've not connected the connections properly or they've jointed lots of wires together and lots of strings. Now this can be mitigated by using microinverters, which I have on my system. Microinverters convert the panel straight from AC, uh, straight from DC on the back of the panel straight to AC. So the risk of DC spark is is lowered because the voltage per per basically panel is a lot lower than what would be in a typical DC string system. There's some other advantages to microinverters, and there's also some disadvantages to microinverters. I have done a video top right between explaining the two, but in short short a string system means that if one panel goes down your entire system gets lowered in voltage so there is a possible chance that someone would have to go up in your panel and refix that but they might not know it's gone down unless you've got long-term data a microinverter if one of those fails or two of them fail then you might have to have someone back on your roof again which means there's more potential of someone going on your roof and damaging it again exactly the same as a string inverter the advantage you've got with a microinverter is the system will carry on working just minus one panel rather than pulling the whole system down now another thing that you might consider not getting solar for is if your roof just can't handle the weight of a solar panel. You might have a very old roof or a roof is in need of serious repair. Or you might just be re-roofing soon, so you don't want solar panels right now. These are very genuine concerns for not having solar panels. Now, other people might think they've not got the perfect roof because it might be at the wrong orientation. We'll get to that in a minute. But you might also have heavy shading there, which means that you just can't get any decent sun on it because it's covered by constant trees or you might have a north only facing roof now north only facing roofs do weirdly generate some power so don't fully discount that if you've got a large surface area of panels that you can put on that roof but if you can only fit a couple of panels maybe 10 15 panels on a north roof then it might not be worth getting solar panels 
However, if you've got an east and west roof like me, it might actually still be beneficial for you to get in panels. Now I have a east roof array at the moment with 10 panels that I've currently got on test. Now I will be updating frequently all the time about how this panel system's performing. I'm coming up to six months soon. So there will be a video released here on this channel about the six month review of how that's been generating. So if you make sure you wanna catch that, go and click subscribe, hit that notification bell, and don't forget to kick thumbs up on this video as well when you finish watching it if you enjoyed it. But also if you didn't enjoy it, give me a thumbs down. Let me know that you didn't enjoy this video. Now there's a couple of other considerations on why you might not get solar panels. And one might be you don't have a roof because you're in a, a flat or a ground floor apartment, or something like that. Or you might not have any garden space to fit any panels either. You might even have a thatched roof. There's plenty of considerations on why you might not be able to have solar. So, you know, if someone says they're getting a battery only system, there is a lot of considerations and we'll also get back to that in a minute. But one other thing that was causing a lot of problems, especially here in the UK, is you might be in a house type called a leasehold house. Now, a lease, lease houses here in the UK, you own the house, you mortgage the house, you pay mortgage payments on it, but you don't own the ground it sits on. And this means that you make monthly uh, leasing, uh, yearly leasing payments to a management company, and they have certain control conditions in that condition that you might not be able to fit solar panels on your roof without having permissions or buying that lease out. So if that buying that cost of that lease out might be 15, 20 grand, and then you've also got to outlay for panels, the payback on that might be even increased on the solar. Now don't fully discount having solar panels put on your roof if you've got a lease. There might be a way of applying for, for permission for whoever owns the leasehold on your house. Uh, some p p home homeowners are able to comply to the leasing company and say, can I fit solar panels? And it's usually a one-off £350 fee, and then you can fit solar panels on your given roof. Now, we're going to get to my thoughts on whether you should get solar in a minute, but let's first have a look at battery only systems. Now battery only systems in the UK have very recently been changed on VAT rules. Now previously in the UK, if you got a battery system only, no solar, you pay 20% VAT on top of the battery price when you were getting it fitted. If you fitted any solar panels, you then got the VAT at 0%. So most people who wanted battery only systems would naturally fit a solar panel or two or three or four to get the 0% VAT. Well, that has gone. You can fit a battery only system now and receive 0% VAT. So does that mean now that battery systems are obviously gonna drop in price, but also means that they have a better payback than fitting solar panels, especially if you were limited on roof space. Now, one thing I do like about battery payback systems is they are simple to work out your payback. Now, solar algorithms on payback have got better and better, but at the end of the day, a solar payback system is basing on the average sun over the next 25, 10, 15 years, however long your payback is, it's basing on the average payback. If you have any shading on your roof, it will change the algorithm, and they have got a lot better, but they are basically estimated guesses. If we have five or 10 years of really bad sun, uh, your payback will be longer. Uh, although reverse is true, if we have a really good couple of years of sun, you might get a better payback. But battery payback can be calculated just purely on what you're paying on the off-peak to on-peak price, and then working out how big of a battery you need and how much of that battery load shifting you can do to off-peak, charging that battery off-peak and then discharging it purely during the peak. Now, if you're an octopus intelligent like me, that's very easy because I pay 30p for peak electricity and 7.5p for off-peak electricity. So for every kilowatt I offset from peak to off-peak, I'm saving an absolute bloody fortune. So it's dead easy to work out, easy maths. Now, if you are an Octopus Energy customer and you're thinking of getting a battery-only system and you have an EV, then maybe check out evnick.com forward slash energy. I've got loads of other Octopus tariffs on there. And there's also a code there to split £100 with me when you sign up to Octopus Energy. Now, one thing to also mention is when you're getting a battery-only system, it's not just the price you're going to save on kilowatts. There is a small 10% loss for the round trips of charging that battery and discharging. So just bear in mind when you get the figure, 
just take 10% off it so you know what the rough savings are. Now, most batteries are a 10% loss. Some can be a 15% loss. If you're using a vehicle to grid system and it's a vehicle to grid plugged in permanently, it might be more than like 20%, but 10 to 15% is the average system loss I've seen on all the battery systems I've tested. If you've not got a battery system yet, you're thinking of getting one, maybe check out my playlist I've done on solar and battery and review tests because I've got a couple of batteries in my garage that I've got on test at the moment, and I'm testing all sorts of various things about how they work, the discharge and charging rate, because they are other things to consider when getting a battery-only system. Now, one thing to remember when getting a battery-only system, you're at the mercy of the energy companies having differential between off-peak and peak. If those differentials change and get closer, then your payback for batteries is going to get worse. There is no guarantee that there's going to be a high differential like there is at the moment between off-peak and peak power. So bear in mind, I am not giving you a guarantee that solar payback will be as good or battery payback will be as good as it is right now. These can constantly change and constantly get closer all the time. Now, I have only got five months in at the moment on my solar. I can't really give you an exact prediction on what the payback will be until I've had it for 12 months. Heatable, who I recommend, they currently do have a battery only system install they can do. It's not on the website yet, but it will be soon, but you can give them a ring. Use evnick.com forward slash heatable if you want to get a quote off them. I do get a small kickback from Heatable, that is worth noting, but I don't really care which system you go for. I just think they're a really decent installer. I've done some videos, independent sort of vi videos about them. There's a whole series on the channel that you can see here. But bear in mind, if you do get solar, see this video here where I mentioned about exporting as much as you can now is actually the biggest payback you can get for solar energy.